Too Mad, Born, Moudé Asidik is a content creator from Winnipeg, Canada of over 2 million subscribers who specialize in a wide variety of content such as gaming, skits, commentary, and comedic blog, garnering over 531 million views on all of his three channels combined. His humor, edgy and weird, led to him having a strong loyal fan base, but also a lot of criticism, sometimes justified and other times flat out retarded. Tumad first gained popularity with his video My Life's Biggest Bro Moment No. 1, published on June 8, 2019, who to this day sits at almost 7 million views. Though his most popular video being the Invading Random Online College Classes was uploaded a while later in April 2020 with over 16 million views. I personally discovered him with his uh, sleep stream, which to this day are some of my favorite videos of all time. It's safe to say that Tumad was always a bit late on the trends. No, uh, as you can see, still uploading MLGS content in 2019. Or maybe he simply didn't give a fuck. Cause Brola Osas don't follow the rules. He does what he wants Stop when he wants. Gang. And if you don't like it, well, <laughs> just too bad. Because uh, he stands on business, no matter what. And this is why to this day, he is one of my inspiration in life. I mean, for the most part. Of course, his edginess and his unapologetic behavior sparked controversies many times. Uh, one example was when he decided to make fun of the K-pop community on Twitter, uh, then making a video laughing at these people and trolling them. Uh, though in his latest K-pop video, he seemed off. When he was reacting to the K-pop stand insult, usually their remarks LMAO and insult care. wouldn't affect him at all, but in that video, he seemed deeply affected by those, especially those mentioning his mother. Of course, as seen in the comment, we quickly discovered that his mother recently passed away before the video was uploaded. This is something to keep in mind for the video. I will come back to this later. Last year, Tumad started schizo posting on Twitter, which annoyed some people. Uh, some user told him to get off Twitter. Tumad then responded to the user with a picture of a girl eating with a caption, I have girlfriend, bro, look. Unknowingly, this tweet was the beginning of the hand for him. The girl in question is Brianna Gray, a 16-year-old trans girl who got killed a while prior to Matt's tweet. So yeah, people on Twitter got mad at him, which led to him replying with, Ah, oh, I didn't know she died, I just thought she was hot. What did he say? Anyways, a Twitter user named Goldie Bell then tweeted calling to Matt a psychotic and told him that if he ever talks to her ever again, she will call the cops, in which Tumad answered with the most Tumad way possible by saying, Okay, call the cops and they'll be like, Who? Asked. You are bullying children! Who? You are an adult Care. man! You are what? an adult man! What? <laughs> you are a full grown man! What? You should know not to harass what? children! Another user named Seven then came forward to call Tumad a stalker and claimed that the, he stalked her for almost a year. Also posting a video where you can see Tumad claiming responsibility and apologizing over him stepping uh, Seven's boundaries and making sexual remarks to her. Hours later, Goldie posted proof of Tumad stalking her and in her claims sexually assaulting her. Though, there is no proof of him sexually assaulting her. There's a lot of evidence of him stalking her but no other proof. Tumat then claimed you that the girl is lying for the sexual assault part, well, but cheaper? never denied the stalking part, claiming I was just that stalking LMAO. is common. So many f***ing dudes that you guys trust on a day-to-day -day basis have done that same sh if not worse. It's common! Common! All that until Goldie brings out the big guns, a contract with Mudea's name signed at the bottom. Contract mentioning that Tumad wasn't allowed to stalk and make sexual advances to Goldie for 60 days. Why 60 days? I don't know. But what's important is the fact that there is a ton of proof against him. Even worse, a fellow YouTuber named James Key co-tweeted Goldie saying that he would help her pay for the lawsuit. Cause yeah, she mentioned being interested in bringing Tumad to court but was too broke to pay all the expenses. So after all that, you would think that Broda Osas is cooked, 
He's done for. It's Jover. Sayonara, my nigga. Would you believe it if Tumat did actually clap back against these claims? This might have been the greatest comeback of the century. A greater comeback than Hong's airline with the strawberry mint air growth oil. He finally answered, dog. In a video, he mentioned that the contract in the video was not written by him and he didn't take the apology seriously. He also mentioned that they were in a relationship kinda is complicated type shit and the message was simply to make her feel better. She was also stalking him back. For example, uh, when she came to his crib at 3am without telling him, he will counter sue her for defamation and finally the sexual assault never happened due to her having a past essay trauma and blaming it on too mad. Yeah, never mind. The whole drama is like some mid ass proof and like some he said she said. Yeah, that's that's kinda mid. On a cold day of February 14th, after my 16 hour Kaisen at Gooning sesh, I opened Twitter to epically own people with facts and logic, which is just me calling people slurs. And then what I saw made my heart drop. Nigga died with Overwatch open. Lumfow. I quickly go in the trending tab and see with horror that, in fact, Nigga died with Overwatch opened. Lumfow. To this day, I am deeply affected by what I saw. I can't even go to Kaisenat anymore. Anytime I see a melatonin filler, I think about him. It's ruining my life. Yeah, not really, but it kind of fucked me up bad though. Uh, so right after Tumad was pronounced dead, our good old homie with a chromey James Key appeared, and this time he got some shit to say. I can finally say it. Tumad was a rapist and a pedophile. Over the past few years, he tried to murder me multiple times for helping the police and detectives in multiple states to investigate a lot of horrible things he's done. He wanted to take out multiple innocent lives by getting behind a wheel and going head-on on freeway while being high on illegal drugs. He didn't succeed once as he overdosed before killing anybody, so he tried it again. Despite him trying to murder me and multiple innocent lives have been trying to help law enforcement to make sure he's safe, doesn't get hurt and doesn't harm anybody. Please remember that he's a rapist and a pedophile, he continued to prey on the vulnerable even after the police got involved, including a 13YO in mental hospital. The tragedy doesn't excuse any of his actions. I will address a lot of stuff when I fully collect my thoughts. Past few months have been a total mess and reason why I ended up in ER. Please give me time. Of course he dropped that bomb, but people asked for proof, and he delivered. Nah, I'm capping. He wrote a whole ass essay but forgot to give proof. When my friends and colleagues say that my life was in constant danger, they're not talking about just threats. Just within a short time frame, I had a bullet hole put in my office window, was told to wear a concealed bulletproof vest when I'm in public, witnessed a SWAT team with ballistic shields outside of my home, and had to cooperate with- Kendrick? Kendrick? Did you hear that, Kendrick? Um, yes. Um, my apologies, I thought my time was up. No, we can continue if you want. Mind you, calling someone a pedo, rapist, and dangerous is big claims, so it would be nice if there were any crumble of proof. But nonetheless, his community ate up those claims and decided to hate on too bad. As if it care, he's dead. Of course, many content creators call out Jemski for that dumbass text he wrote in vain. Except for one. Lady Jaegerbaum, Miss Hetanol herself, just a minx. She went on Twitter to write, I don't know how to feel right now. In which James Key co tweeted Minx, another paragraph claiming that Minx told Tuma to kill himself. Minx then wrote her side of the story. Again, another fucking book. Like, real talk, I think I will fucking kill myself. Anyway, in the text, she confirmed that Tuma is a stalker, though not playing it on his mental health and also providing proof. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. The lawsuit. L l let's take a look real quick. Um, okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
I bet. So he's just based. All right, my favorite part: Yay, debunking people's baby. claims. So yeah, let's start this shit. In the lawsuit, all of those pigs are showing too mad with either an AR-15, an M9, or a Glock. Since the pig are in black and white and in low quality, it looks obvious that he's holding a gun, right? Wrong. He's actually holding a bad dragon dildo. Nah, I'm lying. But <laughs> lucky for you, I have the pics and the videos in colors. Second pic, what do we see? Oh, is that too mad holding an AR-15? Wouldn't be a shame if the pig was cropped just so the BBs on the ground would be shown, right? So we can clearly see that he's shooting at a spider. Uh, truly a menace to society. Uh, what next? Oh, the Glock. In this picture, we see that Tumad is reloading a blicky, where we see a bullet shell flying off the gun and a whole ass mag on the counter. Okay, so it's definitely a real gun, right? Nuh-uh, cause some BB guns do indeed have shells. This is a shell ejecting blaster. A copy of a Glock. Okay, let's just forward the video and... Uh, yeah, shells. Also proving that no, the orange tip is not required by the Canadian law. In fact, I myself have a BB gun and of course no orange tip. And how do One I know that the blicky is bought in Canada? Well, because he clearly mentioned it in this video. You bought guns? You want a blanket, bro? Let me just pull it out of the bag. Wait, you don't believe me, huh? This is Canada, motherfucker. This shit's legal in Canada. Let's take a check. This was done. First it's bullet, and then the fucking Glock, nigga. What the fuck? What the fuck? If the Glock was real, it would also come in a briefcase, not a cheap cardboard box next to a Chipotle bag. Not only that, but Tumad would also need an authorization to carry or an ATC by the Canadian Firearm Program over the Canadian Firearm Safety Course, who then lets you apply to the possession and acquisition license. And I think that Tumad don't really know shit about firearm safety. Hold on, the dude on the left, like, he has the same gun as mine. By the way, I love Yami's response on Twitter, cause, yeah, logically speaking, you can point a real gun at someone and even less having the finger right on the trigger. Finally, that video where we saw Oh, is, is that Goldbill? He, he clearly mentioned the gun is fake. So that whole dangerous guy with a gun stick is all fake. Uh, what's next? Oh, the pedo claims. First off, the Goldie claims lack evidence, and the SA allegations are clearly just talk and no proof. What could play in favor of Too Mad though is a girl named Misty, who came forward and told that Too Mad is not a pedo. According to Furper World, a friend of Tumad, Misty, a former friend of him who is 13 years old, was in Tumad's friend group and never ever was Tumad weird to her or even like tried to date her or whatever, or anyone in that friend group for that matter, which is confirmed by both of them. So is Tumad a pedo? No. Is he dangerous? Neither. But is he a stalker and a piece of shit? So, take my claims with a grain of salt. This is only my hypothesis. What I think happened is, since his mother passed away more than two years ago, Tumad started taking drugs to cope with the pain of losing someone, in that case, his mother. As we can see, he suddenly started to lose weight right after the K-pop video I mentioned earlier, and he started to develop mental issues around the same time. Drugs such as ketamine, what he was using, can lead to weight loss, loss of appetite, confusion of time, place and person, uh, holding false belief that cannot be changed by facts, seeing, hearing or feeling things that are not there, unusual excitement, nervousness or relentless, and sometimes death. All these claims are according to drugs.com and the Banyan treatment centers, link in the description. All of his mental issues caused by the drugs led to him acting like a piece of shit to others, including Goldie Bell. Goldie Bell then turned around, asked James Key, who was already beefing with Tumad for years prior, if there would be any way to bring him down. They then fabricated the pedophilia essay and gun claims to destroy his career, reputation and his life. 
Since the drugs made two men mentally disconnected, it was easy to manipulate him into thinking that he committed those horrible acts. This is what gave the car video, the signed contract, and the apologies via DM mentioned earlier. At the time when Tuman made the video answering the allegations, he was probably in a sober episode. Since Tuman was mentally disconnected, this led to him causing beef to content creators such as Minx, Pyrocynical, Moist Critical, and many more. The false accusation and beef with fellow content creators led to him getting more and more depressed without forgetting about the fact that he became lonelier over time, which led to him taking more and more drugs. On February 14th, Mudea was discovered in his house by the LAPD during a wellness check. He was pronounced dead at 23 years old due to an overdose. Many people tried to help him in vain, but those who could have helped him the most instead fabricated lies and successfully ruined his life. Since he can no longer defend himself, the allegations came right out the day that his passing went public. To this day, those who made these allegations are still being praised and seen as some sort of saviors. His story shouldn't be used to uh, hate or make fun of him, but to remember how much drugs can impact someone's life negatively, and how fragile mental health can be. What happened to him can happen to absolutely anyone. This is why mental health, especially for young men, need to be talked about and cared. I and many people around me personally dealt with these issues that could have led to dark paths. But luckily, I was able to get out of that rabbit hole by getting the right help and with laughter. I want to preface this video by saying that I didn't know too mad, like to the extent that some people in my circle knew him. Based on my connections with the people uh, that knew him and like what they told me about private calls with too mad, uh, I, I believe that he's innocent. And one thing that's been really bothering me about Twitter, like going on right now with too mad trending and everything, is that there is all this slander on somebody after their death, and I haven't seen a single bit of evidence to back up what they're talking about. They're all alleging that he's a rapist and a pedophile, like all this shit. I haven't seen a single bit of evidence and have looked for it and haven't found anything to do with it. And I, I think it's very, it's very sad to see how many people will believe something just because a tweet is getting good engagement. There's people who have never even knew about Too Mad and just like that tweet because James C or whatever put something out saying that. And, and until I see a tweet from James C that provides in-depth details about what happened, I don't believe the allegations.